Hello, uh, welcome to Chinta Advanced Classes. This is a short lecture on elementary number theory. Elementary number theory really deals with integers and integers alone, that is, whole numbers. In fact, we will focus mostly on positive integers or rather non-negative integers. Let me write that non-negative integers so 0 1 2 3 4 etc these numbers are of our primary interest today we, we will discuss about the number of divisors or a peculiar property of the divisors of positive or non-negative integers uh, let's start with an example let's start with an example and uh, we'll take a very simple number let's say 20 and let's prime factorize 20 so prime factorization of 20 will be 2 squared times 5 raised to 1 uh, recall that uh, a prime number is a number which has only two divisors one and itself so doing a prime factorization of a number means that you are splitting the number into small pieces each of the pieces are primes themselves or powers of prime so you can think of the prime numbers as bricks making up the number itself the composite number itself anyway so in this particular example 20 we have this prime factorization which is 2 squared times 5 raised to 1. Now what is useful is that this prime factorization lets us talk about the divisors of 20 pretty directly. So let's talk about let's use a different color. So divisors of 20. Now if you think about it carefully you will see that any divisor of 20, let's suppose d, which divides 20, will be itself made up with these numbers, that is 2 and 5. So you can have 0 2s and 0 5s. So that's 2, to the 2 raised to 0 times 5 raised to 0 which is 1. You can have 0 to 1, 5, which is 5. And then you can have the same thing with 2 raised to 1. So this is 2, this is 10. And the same thing with 2 raised to 2. So you see the pattern, right? I mean, you use each power of, so that's 2 raised to 2 and 2 raised to 2 times 5 raised to 1, that's 20 itself. So you have 6 divisors, of course. And the pattern is this, that you use each prime number, which is in the factorization of 20, and use various combinations of its powers from 0 up to the power that it is pre that is present in the prime factorization and this actually is a hint of how to find out the number of divisors of 20 or of any number given its prime factorization but that is really a, of another lecture we are not really interested in that at this moment Instead, we will talk about something called pairing of divisors. So let's list out the number of divisors of 20 one more time. But in, in this time, we will do it in a little different way. So let's talk about divisors of 20 one more time. So we have 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20. 
So these are the divisors of 20. Now we want to pair them up and my claim is that it is always possible to do it. So how would we pair them up? We will pair up 1 with 20 and then let's use a different color 2 with 10 and let's say green 4 with 5. So that's how we pair up the uh, divisors of 20 and my claim is that it's always possible well almost always possible it's almost always possible to pair the divisors and we are really interested in this almost part that is we want to know when it is not possible uh, to pair things up so first let's see why it is almost always possible to pair the divisors the reason is this that if you look at the pairing that I have done the product of the numbers in each of these pairs so that's 1 and 20 so 1 times 20 2 times 10 4 times 5 if you look at the product of each of the pairs they end up in 20 right so 1 times 20 is 20 2 times 10 is 20 4 times 5 is 20 so in short we will pair two divisors whose product is the number itself so let's generalize so if we generalize if if n is the number that we are working with so in the previous example n was 20 let's take any divisor d of n so if d divides n then clearly n by d is also a divisor of n think about it if 4 is a divisor of 20 then 20 by 4 is of course a whole number because 4 is a divisor of 20 which is 5 is also a divisor of 20 and 20 divided by 20 by 4 would be just 4 so the pair partner of 4 would be 5 and the pair part partner of 5 would be 4 so basically let's let's uh, use a different board here so basically we are pairing up n uh, pairing up d with n over d so d, d being a divisor of n d is a divisor of n So we are pairing up this divisor of n with n by d, which is a, uh, which is also another divisor of m, n. And you can easily see why this pairing will always work. Now this particular pairing, this pairing, has a very interesting consequence. As a very interesting consequence and what is that the consequence is this that the number of divisors the number of divisors of n must be even well we have to be a little cautious here I'll just place almost always here because I'll show why uh, I say almost always but 
but do you see why it is why we we would expect it to be even because the divisors come in pairs so if you add up the pairs you will get the total number of divisors and that would always be an even number so there are so whenever you are getting in in batches of 2 whenever you are getting stuff in batches of 2 and if you can count all of them in batches of 2 then probably then obviously the number of stuff present is divisible by 2 which means that the number of stuff present is even and now let's come to the most important and intriguing part the almost always part why do I say this over and over again the reason is this that it might so happen that D is equal to n over D up to now it may happen Up to now, we were assuming that D and N over D are different. But for some numbers, it's possible that D is equal to N over D, which means for from that particular pair, we are actually getting one distinct divisors. One distinct divisor. So in that case, in that case and, and, and in that case alone, the number of divisors would be odd and you see why because all the other divisors would come in pair only one pair would give out one distinct divisors so 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus several of them plus 1 hence it's an odd number now when will this happen this will happen when d square is equal to n obviously if you cross multiply you get that which means when n is a perfect square so when n is a perfect square the divisors number of divisors would be odd this is a very simple example of logical reasoning in number theory and how prime factorizations can be used to find out simple properties of uh, natural numbers beautiful properties of natural numbers so if n is a perfect square number of divisors is odd so this is uh, the end of uh, this short lecture uh, we will say, see you in the next one. Thank you for listening.